Good evening and welcome to the Christian Truckers Network. This is a ministry that welcomes guest speakers to share their testimonies as well as the Word of God as the Holy Spirit leads. If you would like to be a participant, you can call in at 641-715-0689. Then they'll ask for an access code. And that is 863-397 and then the pound sign. Again, that number is 641-715-0689. The access code is 863-397 and then the pound sign. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back here again on another Thursday night. We always look forward to Thursday nights. It's uh, a night of, you know, it kind of reminds me of just sitting down at a nice, comfortable chair and uh, reading a book. Uh, The only difference is we don't have to do no reading. We can just sit around the Lord's round table, uh, get comfortable, and uh, listen to the guest speaker that the Lord has brought to us on these Thursday nights, and we're so blessed to have with us uh, Brother Dan Boyd. Uh, For those of you who follow the round table, uh, you know our brother from uh, past evening when he was on sharing with us. Uh, He was the last of the circuit riding cowboys. Uh, He has ridden uh, horseback, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in the lower 48 states of this uh, United States. Uh, Personally got escorted out of New Hampshire, I believe it was. (laughs) Said, we don't don't need you up here riding the horse around on the highways. You got to go. So that's why he said he is the last of the circuit riding uh, preachers. So with that being said, uh, Brother Dan, we're uh, blessed to have you here with us tonight. I know we had a tremendous time last time you were on and I don't expect anything less than that tonight. So with that being said, my brother, uh, the floor is all yours, and uh, you have a captivated audience. Well, I want to welcome all of my friends out there on the road, and I want to share a few things with you tonight. You know, cowboys and truckers are an awful lot alike. You know... Cowboys spend long days, short nights, short pay, ride in the bitter cold, extreme heat, breaking ice in the wintertime, you know, pulling calves in the wintertime, dragging calves to the fire. We've been kicked. We've been bit. We've been thrown. We've been run over by mama cows when we're just trying to save their calf. And it ain't much different than you truckers out there. You know, we're spending time in the saddle. You're spending time in your seat. We do a lot of praying on horseback, and I know you guys are too. We're dodging uh, gopher holes and praying that our horses don't get snake bit. You guys are dodging sneaky drivers and potholes. We have a lot in common. You know, I prayed for a pre-cowboy preacher a while back, and I told him I was going to pray for his brain damage. And he said, what what do you mean? He looked at me like I was some sort of nut. Then I went into the fact, because he's been a working cowboy his whole life, and I repeated all the things I just said to you about long days, short nights, short pay, and all the other things that we do. And I said, you love every minute of it. He said, yeah. I said, don't you think that takes a little bit of brain damage? And he just laughed and said, yeah. Well, you guys love what you're doing. And uh, you know what? We're independent, free spirits. And we love the Lord. And we love going everywhere we can and sharing the love of Jesus with anybody who will hold still. And if they won't hold still, we'll run them down. You know, we spend a lot of time in prayer when we're on in the saddle. And, you know, you guys see so much beauty on the road. And when we rode our horses through all the lower 48, We saw beauty in every state. Now, I don't know where you guys are listening at, but I have to tell you, my favorite states are Montana and Wyoming. 
I love that wide open area. But I can't take the ice and snow that they got up there and bitter cold, so I'll stay here in the Flint Hills of Kansas. You know, I've started several cowboy churches. And uh, when I started the first cowboy church, I told the Lord I'd start the church, and I never figured on preaching. So I got a friend of mine that runs a regular church there in Wichita, Kansas. And Dave's such a nice guy. And I told him what the Lord put on my heart. He said, well, he'd be glad to help me. So we started this cowboy church. And you know what? He ain't got a cowboy bone in his body. I put him on my horse, and he looked about as out of place as a lawyer in heaven. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> or a politician in heaven. There might be one or two of them. But, you know, he preached at the cowboy church the same way he did at his big church in Wichita. And, praise God, he is reaching people. But, and the people at his church are kind of the university type, okay? The uh, upper middle in, income. But he also had a street ministry, and I said, Dave, I said, do you preach to the street people the same way you do your church? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, well, you've got to reach them on their level. I said, bingo. I said, the same thing applies here at the Cowboy Church. You better reach these cowboys, country folks, farmers and ranchers on their level, just like you got to reach the street people. Well, the same thing applies for truckers. People, preachers need to understand we need to reach you truckers on your level, not on the university level. And whoever you're reaching, whoever you're trying to share the love of Jesus with, remember, you got to reach them on their level. God's watching every one of us, you know. You know, I said this because when we read the epistles, Jesus used parables all the way through. And when you read the parables, you understand that he's speaking to them in plain language. You know, whether it be the the parable of the the fish with the coin in his mouth, or the Good Samaritan, or the lost coin, or coming like children. Jesus spoke in plain English to everyone, and he wanted them to understand. And every miracle Jesus did, short of walking on water, turning water to wine, was to help someone in need. You know, I think about some of the stories when we were on the road. When we were riding through Texas, my wife and I are riding on 31 Highway between Athens, Texas and Kearns, Texas. And my horse, now mind you, that's deer reserve that's, uh, oh, got a 10-foot high chain link fence. And uh, the grass is belly high to our horses. And I didn't know the problem they were having with the wild hogs down there in Texas. So they put a hot wire at the bottom of the fence, and the hogs had apparently broke it. It was laying out there in the grass. Now, for those of you who know what a hot wire is like to, to touch, well, my horse hit that hot wire. And Bubba and I were doing the Texas two-step in the middle of the highway. And Bubba was leading. Well, he went up in the air. I did a double back flip, and I landed on my back looking at the sun. Well, Bubba was looking down at me as if to say, what are you doing down there? Well, I got up, and I got back on Bubba, and I rode for another two hours. Well, that's the whole reason we got to Kearns, Texas, because... My broken ribs led me to a cowboy church in Kearns, Texas, where I had to lay up and let my 
rib, because I'd broke two ribs in my back and punctured my lung. So I had to lay there and heal up for all over a month before I was fit to ride again. But here's the whole reason for this story, is while I was there, there was a lady that came up to me after I'd preached a sermon, and she said, Dan, I work with a ex-Marine, and for those of you that are been in the service, been a Marine, you know there's no such thing as an ex-Marine. And that's what I told Sandy. And I said, what's the problem? She said, well, I work with him and he's so mean, he's hateful, he's foul-mouthed, he doesn't ever have a good word to say about anything. And she says, I just can't deal with him. Well, I thought about it and I prayed about it. And the next Sunday, I issued the challenge. And the challenge was pretty simple. The Lord gave it to me, so I don't take credit for any of these. It's stuff that the Lord's put me in place to do and to help. So understand that all the stories I tell are only to help people. I don't want glory for it, period. But Sandy was hurting. So that Sunday, I had the biggest guy in church come up front, and then I had the smallest guy come up front. And I, I'm right up in front of the whole congregation, and I told the little guy, I said, get toe-to-toe with that big guy. And they're standing about two foot apart. I said, no. I said, get toe-to-toe with him. So the little guy got toe-to-toe with the big guy, and I said, now look up at him. And the little guy looks up. I said, now repeat after me. I said, I want you to smile, but I want you to repeat after me. Jesus loves you and stood alive. Will you go to church with me next Sunday? And, of course, we're in church, and the big guy looks down and says, yeah. Well, everybody laughed. But that was a challenge the Lord issued, and Sandy took the challenge. She went to work the next day. She couldn't wait to call me that night, and she was so giddy. I said, tell me what happened. She said, I took the challenge. I got toe-to-toe with him. And she said, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Well, she said he was speechless. Now, that was in December of 2013. Two years later, Sandy died. And in between that time, Sandy had been given that same challenge to everybody she met. Jesus loves you and so do I. Will you go to church with me next Sunday? Well, when Sandy died, my wife and I, we were on our journey. We drove all the way from uh, South Carolina where we were at a church. And we drove to Texas for her funeral. And after the funeral was over, I asked the people that worked with her, I said, what about that uh, retired Marine? Uh, He had to work that day, so he wasn't at the funeral. And they said, ever since Sandy gave him the challenge, he hadn't been the same. It changed his life. So you see, folks, a simple challenge, like Jesus loves you and so do I, anybody can take that challenge. Anybody can. But Sandy did. And that wasn't hard. You see, we all have to be willing to take a stand. And if we're not willing to take a stand, we're in trouble. You know, it's doing a simple act of kindness. It's sharing the love of Jesus. Uh, I I told a story about another guy that, an old rancher in Kansas by the name of Rusty Barbie. A friend of mine wrote a song about him. And then I was invited to preach at this cowboy church in Knowles, Oklahoma. And I talked about Rusty Barbie's faith and the fact that Rusty Barbie lost a son. A 16-year-old son was drunk to death by a horse. But Rusty Barbie's faith never faltered. And Rusty Barbie, you could see the love of Jesus in Rusty everywhere he went. 
And that's what I'm talking about tonight. People have to see the love of Jesus in us. And if they don't see the love of Jesus in us, we're in trouble, folks. I want to share one more story with you about cowboys. And I'm going to tell you about an old cowboy that worked at a sail barn as a pinback rider. And when you're a pinback rider, you're in line, a line of horseback riders. And when the cattle come out of the ring, the next rider gets behind the cattle and drives them out to the pen. Well, this cowboy worked two horses that day. They were probably, oh, 10 hours in the saddle. And he is a preacher. And all these young cowboys are watching him. They're watching to see what he's going to do when they tell a dirty joke. They're watching to see what he's going to do if he's going to help someone else in need or if he's just going to sit and watch everybody else pick up the slack. Well, that, that, this old cowboy finished up after 12 hours. He loaded his two horses and he drove to the Walmart in El Dorado, Kansas. Now, the sale barn I was talking about is the El Dorado Livestock Sale Barn east of town. And he had to get some grub, so he stopped at Walmart. And this is a pretty neat story, folks, because this old cowboy got a few groceries, and he came up to the checkout. And he paid cash. And when he reached into his pocket, he dropped a few coins. Well, he uh, paid for the stuff, and he put his money back in his pocket, and then he felt a tug on, tug on his shirt. And he turned around, and here's a little boy about five years old. And the little boy is looking up at this old cowboy, and he reaches out his hand, and he said, Mister, you dropped some money. And the old cowboy was so touched, he took the two coins and stuck them in his pocket. And he reached into his pocket, and he gave the little boy $10. He squatted down and gave him $10, and he said, this is for being honest. Now that little boy just grinned, and so did his father. That little boy's father and everybody around was just thrilled when they saw this. The old cowboy got his groceries and left. Got in his truck and took his horses on home. But that little boy will remember that act of kindness as long as he lives, and so will his father, and so will everybody else that was watching. You see, every one of us has an opportunity to share, and people are watching you. They're watching to see if you're going to help some old lady with her groceries. They're watching to see if you're going to help someone in need, if you're going to give a uh, listen to someone who's hurting. You see, if people don't see the love of Jesus in us, well, I've got four scriptures I want to share with you tonight. And then I'll explain to you. You see, the first scripture I want to give you is Matthew 18, 2 through 5. Jesus called the little child to him and placed their hand, that placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Jesus said this, folks. 
Because when you tell little children that Jesus loves you, they don't question it. They believe. You take the song, Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little children believe it. They don't question. You see, the older we get, the more we question. You know, I can spend a long time in the saddle and I can work my horses, but I have learned over the years that I question a lot of things. But I will not question my Lord and Savior. You have to believe like a little child. And that's why he said it repeatedly. Next scripture I want to give you is Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Jesus said, Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Now I talk about taking a stand. I talk about people seeing the love of Jesus in you. If you're not bold enough and brave enough to take a stand, if you're not bold enough or brave enough to say, Jesus loves you and so do I, if people don't see the love of Jesus in you, you're in trouble. The best compliment you can give a cowboy is to call him a top hand, right? Well, the same thing applies to a trucker. The best compliment is to call him a top hand. That means you can count on him to get the job done the first time every time. Now, when it comes to Jesus, if people don't see the love of Jesus in you Monday through Saturday, you're a Sunday bench warmer. Now, I'm not pointing the finger at any of you. I'm just saying that we all know people like that. We have to take a stand. That brings me to the third scripture. In Matthew 22, 36 through 40, they say, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two. That's just one more way of saying you've got to be a Christian. People got to see the love of Jesus in you Monday through Saturday. And Jesus talked about people that don't show that love. In Revelation 3, 15 and 16, Everybody knows John 3.16, but we need to remember Revelations 3.15 and 16. Jesus said, I know your deeds, that are, you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Folks, I know a lot of cowboys who love the Lord and they see his beauty all around them. And back in the 60s, I drove a truck. And I've seen a lot of truckers at the truck stop who were lost. And you're on the road, whether you're a truck driver or whoever you are or wherever you are, you have the ability and if you love Jesus you've got the chance to be bold enough and brave enough to take the challenge to share the love of Jesus you know there were a lot of years that I drifted away from the Lord last year I told you guys about losing my first wife and oldest son for 12 years I blamed God. And it took a preacher to be patient with me back when I was working as a bouncer in a cowboy bar. Well, I think I started more fights than I stopped. But this preacher was patient with me. And we talked, had coffee. 
And I told him, I said, you know, my wife and son are laying in a casket and my other son's in intensive care and I didn't know if he was going to live or die. And uh, this lady came up to me in the funeral home and she said, this was God's will. And then she said, God won't give you more than you can bear. Well, it took that preacher a long time to convince me that God had nothing to do with that accident. And I'm having the same position that he was in because I've got people coming to me blaming God for what happened to their loved one. Right now, I've got a guy at the church lost his wife two years ago. He's still hurting and he's blaming God. And I keep telling him God had nothing to do with her death. God gives everybody free will. You know, and that's like some kid that's texting and driving and pulls out in front of one of you guys and you can't stop. A lot of people don't realize how long it takes to stop a rig. Well, it takes a while for some people to get it through their head that God had nothing to do with those accidents. That was somebody's free will, or it was a mechanical failure. God doesn't make tires blow out. God doesn't make stuff fall off of a truck. God doesn't make people cut in front of you or spin out on ice. Those are things that just happen sometimes because somebody wasn't paying attention. Sometimes it's the weather. But every one of us has the opportunity to share the love of Jesus with those that are hurting. Every one of us has the opportunity to listen. Sometimes that's all it takes is to listen. Let them cry. Let them say what they feel. And sometimes that's hard to do, but we've got to be willing to do just that. So folks, if people don't see the love of Jesus in us, we're Sunday bench warmers. And I want and I pray that each and every one of you is bold enough and brave enough to take that challenge this week, say it. I don't care how many times. Say, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Will you go to church with me next Sunday? Or if they're not in your area, just ask them to go to church. You know, I've been called a Jesus freak. And that's fine. I'm not ashamed somebody calls me a Jesus freak. I'm fanatically in love with Jesus. I'm fanatically in love with every one of you guys. And I, if you need me any time of the day or night, you can call me. That's my job. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. If you need to talk, you call me. If you're close by, I'll meet you no matter where or what time. Every one of us are called to do that. Now, the stories I tell are true stories. And I tell them not for the glory, not for the praise, not for the recognition, but to help someone else. We've got a lot of stories from that journey and a lot of stories since we've been off of the road. I started a cowboy church here locally, oh, about uh, five months ago. We were meeting at a saddle club. And I'm telling you this one because, well, we were meeting in a saddle club and we called it church in the dirt because we met outside. We were fixing up the building, and they started reorganizing. And the new 
leadership of the Maverick Saddle Club in Ark City, Kansas, decided they didn't want a church at their saddle club. So they kicked us out of there. And as painful as that was, and as angry as it made me, I still got to pray for them. You know, there's the old me would, would like to whip them in Jesus' name and pray for them later. But that's not what God wants me to do. So we started meeting in the gazebo till it turned cold. So we don't have a location for our church now, so we had to cancel church until we can find a location, a building to have Cowboy Church in. You see, Cowboy Church is mostly about short sermons and lots of Cowboy Christian music. It's about sharing the love of Jesus anywhere and everywhere. And at the Cowboy Church, and I called it the Horses, Hats, and Hay Cowboy Church, where Jesus is always first. That's what we call it. And we have a meal every Sunday after church. And we feed the body and soul. I know I've gone on a while and I could go on and on and tell you a lot of stories but it's simple folks do you believe like a little child does do you deny Christ do you love your brother your neighbor are you hot or cold Or are you a Sunday bench warmer? If you're hot, praise God. If you're like a little child, praise God. If you love your brother, praise God. Share it. Take the challenge. Be bold. And you can always follow me when when we get going again. I've got lots of stories that I put on the Facebook. I have two sites. The last circuit riding preacher and Dan Boyd. The stories are the same, which you can find me in either place. And the one last thing I want to tell you guys is what I love about cowboy churches it's the fastest growing church in America today. When I started the first one in Kansas, there was only 200. Today, there's over 5,000, and they're popping up all over the place. But what I love about cowboy churches is they don't pass an offering plate. It's about the love of Jesus. It's not about money. They got a bucket in the back, a feed bucket. What you give is between you and the Lord, and nobody needs to know or see. It's about sharing the love of Jesus. And I'm pretty proud of the cowboy churches. I even helped start one in Vermont, in Upper Peninsula of Michigan, in Casper, Wyoming. In Riverton, Wyoming, I helped that one. And I helped with several of them in Texas. Why? Because I love Jesus and I want to help. And I'll say it again, if you need to talk, you can call me at any time, day or night. My phone number is 316 722 one six oh nine folks I appreciate you having me I appreciate all that you say and all that you do Steve I'm sending you some magnets I'm going to get them from John and send them to you and if you need more, you let me know. 
we'll cover the cost. You let me know, and I'll send you a couple CDs. Now, amen, amen. folks, I'm going to sh- I'm going to share one last thing with you. The CDs that I'm sending are Cowboy Christian. Now, Cowboy Christian, I'm a member of the Western Music Association, and I don't like today's country. Don't get mad at me if you do. This is just my opinion. Today's country is what city folk do indoors. Cheating, drinking, partying. Western music is what country folk live outdoors. God, family, country, farming and ranching. Don't forget guns. (laughs) Yeah. They, we don't have robbery in this part of the state because everybody's got a gun. <laughs> I heard that. And, you know, you talk about guns. When we were at the Cowboy Church at Sierra Vista, Arizona, now, I got a peacemaker that I carry on my side. and When they did a story on me in Cody, Wyoming, a bunch of people said, what in the world does a preacher need to be doing carrying a gun? Well, those folks don't understand when you're riding out in the middle of nowhere in the summertime and there are snakes and whatever, you better have a gun. But when we were in Sierra Vista, now, all of you guys know what I'm talking about when I say you take your wife to Walmart and she can't go in for two things and come out right away. It takes her an hour. And she comes out with 50 things. Well, we went to Sierra Vista, and I went in with my wife. And every third person had a firearm on them. I've never been in a place in this whole country that that many people were carrying. But you know what? They didn't have any robberies around there. Who's going to rob a place where everybody's got a gun? I'm tired of people blaming guns. It's not the gun, it's the people that use them. But if more people had them, there'd be less people trying to use them. Now, that may not be biblical, but Our founding fathers gave us that right to bear arms. Amen. Matter of fact, our founding fathers, how many of you guys know that in the original states, to hold an elected office, our founding fathers had passed laws that you had to be a Christian to hold an elected office in some of the New England states, our early states. A lot of people don't know that. Anyhow, thank you guys. I love each and every one of you. And, uh, man, what you guys are doing here is awesome. I appreciate every one of you. Amen. Well, we definitely do appreciate you. Uh, If anybody's got any comments, feel free to jump on in there. Go ahead, Steve. Tell, tell them our favorite sayings, your, your, your Baptist saying and my Pentecostal saying. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> Brother Todd there, northern Minnesota, you know, he's Pentecostal. He loves to say, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Well, I'm Baptist. I'm Baptist, and I believe in praising the Lord and passing the fried chicken. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the only problem with that saying is you better have a gun to protect the fried chicken. <laughs> or at least one to <laughs> shoot the chicken or at least one to shoot the chicken to fry it, right? No. Shoot anybody that tries to take it away from you. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that about the, the cowboy churches there, Dan, that because uh, um the one that I'm familiar with what they do pass an offering place is is that um the, the ones that don't have are them the ones that you started, or is there different associations of the Cowboy Church? Well, there's different associations all over 
but most of them, now I can't say all of them, but most of them that uh, I've been affiliated with have a feed bucket, you know, or a cowboy hat or a boot in the back, you know, a cowboy boot in the back, and everybody just puts into that. And, you know, when I started the first one, the Lord put it on my heart then that it was never to be about money, and I was never to preach on money. So I have never asked, and never will, ask for money. And what I forgot to tell you guys is when I started that cowboy church, and Dave helped me, well, after six months, Dave's church told him that if we didn't join their denomination, that he couldn't preach anymore. So Dave told me that, and I said, well, I said, Dave, it's not my choice. we got to ask the people here at this church. It's their church. Well, everybody voted to stay non-denominational. You know, we weren't affiliated with any denomination. Well, his church wouldn't let him come preach anymore. Well, you know who the Lord put up there to preach. And I never wanted to be a preacher. But you know what? I still don't consider myself a preacher. I consider myself a pastor. Because my job is to help those in need. I may bring the message. But when somebody's sick. That's my job to go see them. It's my job to listen when they're hurting. That's what I call a pastor. Amen. Amen. Under the clock, shepherd. Amen. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's definitely different than a than an evangelist. Or uh. Yep. So, amen. Yep. Yep. And 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 you know why was that there? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know why the Bible calls this sheep? Go ahead. Sheep are dumb animals. Sheep are dumb yep. animals. They're easily led. <laughs> yep, and easily led astray. Yep. All you have to do is watch the politics. Watch Trap the politics. Always are on the other side of the fence. Do you guys know what the definition of politics is? Oh, go ahead. Poly is a Greek word meaning many. And ticks are blood-sucking parasites. <laughs> yeah, what ticks, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, well, I, part I don't of the... Touch, I don't want... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I don't much care for politicians... I'd sure like to see term limits, and I'd sure like to see average Americans running for office instead of only the rich that got the money. Yep. That's what we need, folks. We need we need laws that everybody gets the same amount of money to campaign, no more, no less. And if that were the case and you got term limits, we'd see a lot of Americans average Joes like you and me running for office. Yep. So, uh, you touched on it earlier. Um, uh, the motto of uh, the trucker's prayer line is we're, we're about a relationship, not a religion. Amen. And that's, that's kind of the motto of the Christian Truckers Network, too. It's, it's not, not, not about your religion. We're concerned about your relationship with the one. Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the way it is. We've got to take a stand and we've got to share that love with anybody and everybody. And I don't want to hear what church uh, does this or what church does that. I'm glad that they are working. But let me share one more thing with you guys. When we were in a church, big old Baptist church, Okay, and it could have been any other kind of church because I met pastors all over this country that I didn't particularly like because they wouldn't work together. And I called several pastors and I said, you know, it's time that we start working together. And if we start working together, we can put God back in our government. That's 
right. But I heard time after time, Pastor, say, I'm not going to work with any other denomination. I'm not going to work with any other pastor. I'm going to take care of our flock. Well, that's great. But we're supposed to work together. And if we won't work together, we're not going to be able to put God back into our government. Amen? Amen. That's That's right. right. And everybody thinks it's about sheep stealing. You know, that's what's unique about the trucking industry and the ministries that are out here. And uh, that's what's unique about the Christian Truckers Network, that last word, network. Every one of us network together. We all work with each other, and each and every one enhances the other one. You know, we uh, we hand out Bibles. Uh, we get that from Good News Distribution. We hand out CDs. We get that from uh, Lonesome Road Ministries and Channel 21 Ministries. You know, we all work together. It isn't one person saying, this is my ministry, and I don't want you around, or I don't want your help. We all work together, and that's what's so unique about uh, trucking ministries. Well, what I love about what I've read and what I've heard about you guys is it's never about a denomination. You never ask, what denomination are you? Do you love Jesus, period? Amen, amen. Everybody comes from a different denomination in the trucking industry. And some of them got their own denominations that we haven't been told about yet. But, you know, we hear about them sooner or later. But you're right. You know, it's uh, if you love Jesus, you believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, you believe in salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ and no other way. You know, now we're on working grounds. We got a common uh, agreement yeah. here, a common denominator that we're working with. And uh, the other things, uh, some of them are... Or, you know, they're, they're non-essentials, you know, uh, some of the things that it really doesn't matter. They're not going to get you into heaven or keep you out of heaven. No, nope. you know, the bottom line is, let's find common ground. Let's not talk about doctrine. I've never preached on doctrine. You know, uh, all that does is separate. Your church may have a different doctrine than mine. But if your church believes that Jesus bled and died for our sins, and nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus, hey, bingo. Amen. It doesn't get any simpler. <laughs> Let's Amen. focus on the things that we have in common. Right. You know? Right. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I shared the similarities between cowboys and truckers. I mean, back when I was driving a truck, most all the truckers wore cowboy hats and boots anyhow. And a lot of the truckers that I knew here in Kansas either were old cowboys or worked on a ranch and drove truck on the side, you know, uh, or had to get a job to support their own ranch or their their farm. That's right. There was cowboy boots, cowboy hats, you had jeans, you had a nice western shirt. You looked you looked decent. There was no flip flops and stretch <laughs> pants and sweatpants and uh yeah, this this new breed of drivers, it's uh, yeah. Don't get me started oh, man, there. You, but, know, uh, you just put a nasty image in my face when I you're talking about somebody <laughs> in stretch pants. I just pictured some big fella stepping out of the rig with stretch pants on and damn. Oh yeah. <laughs> Could be worse than I see it all the time. Could be worse. It could huh? be spandex. <laughs> oh man. That that'd be like a hip open spandex. Oh man. <laughs> uh, you know, God's got a sense of humor. Amen. Amen. And you know, the, the, the Bible tells us that if we laugh, we'll live longer, right? Right. I've been to I've been to some churches where nobody smiled. They all looked like they were going to die today. You got to laugh. You got to you got to find some joy. You got to man. I've had a whole lot more fun as a Christian than I ever had when I was working in the bars. And see, that's another problem we have, guys, is the young people today think that if they become a Christian, they're not going to have any fun. 
They think Christians are boring. Like I said, I've had a whole lot more fun since I became a Christian. And I'll tell you what, I wake up Sunday morning and I don't have to wonder where I was at last night. I know that's, that's true. the difference. You know, and back when I was bouncing in the bar, I wasn't a nice guy. But you know what? God changed my life, and that's what I, my job is to help those that are lost. Every one of us has that opportunity. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, we definitely... I want to share... Go ahead, go ahead. I want to share with these guys what you and I talked about earlier today. I've got some cowboy Christian singers that I'm going to put in touch with you guys, and I'm going to send a couple CDs that's cowboy Christian music, including the song that I wrote, Bandits for Christ, Stealing Souls from the Devil. And uh, an album that Donnie Huffman and I put together. So, I hope you guys enjoy the music. I hope if you ever need to talk, you can call me. I hope if there's anything I can do to help you, I will, including the magnets. Amen, amen. Now you're telling everybody what you're sending me, and they're going to be calling me. I was going to just hide it all and keep it for myself. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> oh, well, hey, <laughs> I didn't expect you to be stingy. I know it, but, you know, you're still working on me. <laughs> well, that's why I'm sending you more than one CD. <laughs> okay. <laughs> amen, amen. You can make copies. Amen. Well, I sure hope that you guys enjoy the music. Oh, I know I will. That's all I listen to for the most part anyway. So that's right up my alley. I like that. But we're so appreciative. Well, of I hope I didn't, go ahead. Go ahead. hope I didn't go too long. No, no, not at all. Not at all. And uh, I hope that my prayer is that everything that I told you that you're able to use it to help someone else. Before we close, let me pray with you guys. Okay, and, uh, you know, we're definitely going to need to pray with you as well. That's a tradition here. We don't let nobody go by without praying for them. Uh, in our time of uh, closing with prayer, a uh, gentleman that was on, Mike Sisko, they, I just got a text from him that they have put his grandson in a hospital. So we need to keep him in prayer as well. His name right, is let Isaac. Me begin and then I'll, let me begin and I'll let you uh, and anybody else finish. How's that? That works. Our Father in heaven, you are the one and only living God. We come to you in your son's name. In Jesus' name, we lift up this boy that they just put in the hospital. And Father, I lift up every one of these truckers. I pray that you open their hearts and minds for this message. And I pray that you give them comfort and safety on the road. Help them avoid the potholes. Help them avoid the snaky drivers. Give them the strength and courage to serve you and to serve others and to love their family and to share that love everywhere they go with everyone they meet. And Father, I pray for the cowboys. Father, there are a lot of working cowboys that work from Montana to Texas, and they work at various ranches, and all they ever get paid is they get paid cash, and when they can't ride anymore, Father, there's no place for them to go. And, Father, we want to build a place called Jesus Christ Junction for old cowboys to retire. 
that we lift these cowboys up to you because there are still a lot of working cowboys here in the Midwest, and there are some that are getting to the point they can't ride. So, Father, we lift them up to you. We lift the churches up to you. We lift the leadership up to you. We lift our elected officials up to you, Father. And, Father, we put them in your hand. And we ask that you have control in all that we say, all that we do. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Brother Todd, you want to pray for our guest speaker and close us out? Amen, Father. Lord God, we just thank you, Father, once again. Lord, as, as we've come here together with one mind and one accord, and uh, for us that uh, we're on the receiving end of what Dan brought us, Lord God, we just we just can't thank you. Lord, he just touched on so many points. It's been uh, discussions um, in uh, our little uh, conversations uh, during our Bible study. Lord, so that, that's just you confirming once again that you're, uh, you're concerned about your people, your followers. Lord, to, to bring messages. Lord, we just thank you for... Uh, Pastor Dan, and for him being an obedient servant warrior to a mighty and awesome God, Lord, that that, uh, that he would come here and, and talk to us drivers again, take time out of his schedule. Lord, we just pray that you just continue to pour out your blessings upon him and upon the ministries that you've called him to do, Lord. Lord, give him the time that he needs in, in his daily walk. To get accomplished what you would have him accomplish, Lord. Lord, that uh, that he would never have a want or a need for for the Holy Spirit or for for finances. Lord, as he talked tonight about us showing people your love. Lord, I just pray that that, that just rings through us, Lord God. I know my brother Steve and I were talking about that today, about us, and uh, whether we were lukewarm or hot or cold. And Lord, that's just confirmation of, of him and I talking um, and, and with, with, uh, with Dan tonight. Lord, we pray for Cisco's grandson. Lord God, we don't know what's going on there, but you do. And Lord, we just pray for Mike and his family. Father, just touch Mike. I know that he knows that you got this, but Father, just just give our brother that touch, that hug, that Holy Spirit, them holy rollers right now, Lord God. That that he that just let him know, just let our dear brother know that that we're praying for him, that we're lifting him up, Lord, we're, we're putting him in front of us, we're standing in the gap, Lord, that you would give him strength. Lord, give him peace and comfort through this situation, Lord, that can only come from heaven. Lord, there's many, there's lots of peace and comforts and joys that this world offers out, but there's none that is as assuring, Lord God, and as peaceful and as joyful <laughs> as that joy of heaven and that comfort that comes from the Holy Spirit. So, Lord God, we just thank you, Father. We just pray for her. For them cowboy churches that Dan talked about tonight, Lord, that you just bless them mightily. Just let them know that your Holy Spirit is there. Every time they open up the doors, every time they answer their phone, every time they fill the seats, Father, whether it's in a gazebo, Lord God, whether it's in a parking lot, whether it's in a, a corral. Lord God, your word says where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that we can serve a mighty and an awesome God, such as you. Lord, and we just thank you that you've brought this dear brother to us for a time such as this. Lord God, that, that he, just, he, he, he just he just hit it out of the ballpark. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord God. And we just pray blessings over him and his family, over his horses, Lord God, and, and all that he does. 
Lord, we just pray that everything that he puts his hands to, Father God, you just bless him. You just open up the floodgates of heaven. Just open up the windows and just pour it out on our breath. Father, we just thank you, and we just praise your holy name. And it is in your Son's holy and precious name that we humbly pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, there's a couple of names that are really flooding my mind right now. So as we're closing out in prayer, I think we need to just keep going with this. Father God, we just lift up baby Stevie to you, Lord. Lord, you know the struggles of this little infant child. And Father God, I don't think this baby's more than just a few months old. Struggling for her life from time to time, Lord, and having a problem with her lungs and her breathing and just all the things that have attacked her body. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would put your hands upon her, Lord God, that in that hospital room they feel your presence, Lord God, that they know that you are there with them, Father. Give them that peace and that comfort. Give them that peace that Jesus talks about when he says his peace surpasses all understanding. He says, I give unto you my peace, not as the world gives unto you, but as I give unto you. I pray, Lord God, that they feel that peace, that they feel your presence. And, Lord God, we lift up Daisy to you, Lord God, just a young 17-year-old girl been diagnosed with leukemia. Lord God, touch her heart, Lord. Touch her body. Touch her from her head to her bottom of her feet, oh, Lord. Yes, Father. Father God, as you are Jehovah Rapha, the great healer, hallelujah, Lord God, we give you praise, glory, and honor in your touch, Lord, in the healing that you have done. Lord, you've healed so many that we have been witness to, Lord. We've seen you touch and heal fourth stage cancers, removing tumors, taking kidney stones. Lord, there's nothing that you can't do. So, Father God, as we come before you, we have that faith in you, Lord God. We have that trust in you, Lord. Father God, we put more faith and trust in you than any of these doctors that walk this earth, even though we know that the wisdom that they have, that you have given them. But, Father, why do we want to go to them when we have you? And I praise you for that, Lord. And I know, Lord, that you use these doctors and you use these hospitals. But, Father God, I know all you have to do is just touch them, Lord. Touch them in a mighty and a special way. So, Lord God, for all these little babies, Lord, all these little children, Father God, little men, Maddie, that's in a wheelchair, Lord God, that she would rise up and walk, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even as Peter told the lame man at the gate, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I'm praying the little Maddie, Lord, will rise up and walk, hallelujah. And we're going to praise you for that. So, Father God, touch these little children in a mighty way, Lord. Let them be the kids that they were created to be, Father God. And these homes that these children live in, let them hear the laughter and the, the stomping of the feet running down the hallways, Lord, of their house houses, Father God, and, and fill that house with the life of that sound of young children. Lord, we just praise you for that. So, Father God, we do thank you for this evening, Lord God. We thank you for the doors that you have opened up, Lord, uh, these uh, mighty men of God that come and uh, are the men, the mighty men that serve a mighty God, an awesome God. That, Father God, as you've opened the door for them to come in and to share, you know, each and every one of our hearts and what we need to hear, the confirmation that we need to receive. And, Lord, you, you, just come, you just come through each and every time. So, Lord, we just praise you for that. So, Father God, as we have come here to sit around your table this evening, Lord. We, uh, we come with a, a grateful heart and a humbled heart. So, Father God, it's in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus we pray. Amen, amen. Amen, brother. Amen. I thank you guys so much for having me. You know, it's every chance I get to share the love of Jesus anywhere and everywhere, I'll take it, no matter when or where. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we definitely appreciate you being on here, and uh, we will be in touch. I gotta, I'll got i be talking with you in the next uh, day or so. As you say, you got some phone numbers there for me, so that's, uh, that's definitely a great thing. <laughs> so with that being said, for all those that have joined us here this evening, whether it be by a conference line or whether it be by a Spreaker, iHeart, Spotify, whatever avenue you decided to come here tonight, we definitely do appreciate you being here and hope that you were blessed as much as I was. Is blessed. So with that being said, I bid each and every one a farewell, a good evening, until we uh, come to sit around the Lord's table again. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, Steve.